Hi, I'm Kyle Zanaco. Hi, I'm James Wu. We are endocrine surgeons at the UCLA Endocrine Center. Today, we'd like to talk to you about two treatment options for thyroid cancer, the total thyroidectomy and the thyroid lobectomy or partial thyroidectomy. If you've been diagnosed with a thyroid tumor that is less than four centimeters in size or about the size of a walnut or an Oreo cookie, then you have a couple of choices regarding your treatment. Of course, your choice will also depend on any risk factors you might have and the treatment that best suits your needs. This is a decision you will make together with your endocrine care team. First, let's talk about total thyroidectomy, which is the removal of the entire thyroid gland. The benefits of total thyroidectomy are, one, it treats the cancer by removing it. Two, it allows us to monitor for a recurrence with the thyroglobulin protein, which is a simple blood test that is only really useful if the entire thyroid is removed. Three, after a total thyroidectomy, radioactive iodine ablation therapy can be administered if your tumor displays high risk factors, such as growth of the tumor outside of the thyroid or spread to the lymph nodes. And four, a total thyroidectomy prevents the risk of having to come back for a second surgery. As with any surgery, there are risks and side effects to total thyroidectomy. The important risks include, number one, temporary or permanent injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which can result in a temporary or permanent hoarse voice and can occur around 5% of the time as a temporary injury and up to 1% of the time as a permanent injury. Two, permanent hypoparathyroidism, which results in permanently low calcium requiring calcium supplementation and occurs up to 1% of the time with these surgeries. And three, you will absolutely have to go on a lifelong thyroid hormone replacement therapy after a total thyroidectomy. A total thyroidectomy is a good choice for patients who are already taking thyroid hormone and who would like the added assurance of being able to watch for the return of thyroid cancer with a simple blood test and an ultrasound if needed. So the other treatment option for your thyroid cancer is to undergo a thyroid lobectomy or partial thyroidectomy. What are the benefits of thyroid lobectomy? Well, number one, it will still remove the cancer completely. We don't treat the thyroid cancer anymore by removing the normal half of the thyroid gland. Number two, uh, many patients have normal thyroid function even with only half of their thyroid. The issue though is that for patients with thyroid cancer, we like to make sure they get a little extra thyroid hormone to keep the body's demand for thyroid hormone low to prevent stimulation of growth of the remaining thyroid cells. Because of that, about 50 to 60% of thyroid cancer patients still need to take some thyroid hormone after a lobectomy. Number three, when we limit surgery to just one half of the thyroid, only one recurrent laryngeal nerve is put at risk instead of two. And number four, there is no risk of low parathyroid hormone after a thyroid lobectomy because one half of the neck has not been operated on. So what are the risks or downsides of undergoing a thyroid lobectomy? Well, number one, is that if we only remove half the thyroid, there's about a 50% chance that we may call you back and tell you that you need a completion thyroidectomy, removal of the other half of the thyroid. This usually occurs when we find high risk features of the thyroid cancer after the fact, and we want to give patients radioactive iodine therapy, which is only possible again if you have the entire thyroid removed. Number two, when you've only had a thyroid lobectomy, we are not able to monitor the thyroid cancer using the thyroglobulin blood test, which is only valid after a total thyroidectomy. So for surveillance, we perform just frequent neck ultrasounds to watch for thyroid cancer occurrence. So who is thyroid lobectomy a good operation for? It's a good operation for patients who want to absolutely minimize the risks of surgical complications, it's good for people who hope to have a chance to not take extra thyroid hormone supplement after surgery. And number three, it's good for patients who are uh, okay with the possibility of needing to come back for a second surgery, if, even if that risk is 15%.
for more information about thyroid disease and thyroid surgery, please visit our website, shown below, and check out our other videos. If you'd like to have an in-person consultation or via telemedicine, you can submit a request online on our website or call our clinic. Thanks for watching.